Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll train a classification model with the data we split and pre-processed in the previous tutorial in this series. We will learn about the training parameters and how to observe the training process. For this video, I use a slightly shortened version of the second program of this example series that comes with HDevelop. First, we query the devices that are available to perform deep learning on your computer. You can inspect the available DL device handles and set DL device according to your hardware and requirements. In this example, we use a GPU if available to benefit from the expected performance boost. Then, as in the previous example, the paths and parameters are defined all together at the beginning of the program. To adapt this example for your own application, you'll mainly work in this part of the example. First, the batch size defines how many samples are processed simultaneously. This parameter is mostly important because of the finite memory of your hardware. However, there are other aspects, like generalization and convergence speed, that may make a certain batch size suitable for your application. One epoch has passed when all training images have been processed by the model once. A deep learning training consists of multiple epochs to find the best model parameters. The learning rate is one of the most important parameters affecting whether a training works well or not. The learning rate determines how much the model parameters are updated during training. Ideally, your loss curve should look something like this. The loss function compares the prediction of the network with the ground truth of what is expected in the image. Differences are considered loss. To optimize the model, the training tries to minimize the loss. If we set the initial learning rate too low, the training is very slow or might not work at all. On the other hand, if we set the initial learning rate too high, an error might occur. If the curve looks good initially, but then flattens, you should try and decrease the learning rate at this point. Then, the model might improve further. Here we create a change strategy for the learning rate that reduces the learning rate to a tenth of the previous value after four epochs repeatedly. It is worth mentioning that these parameters are not Halkin specific they are common to deep learning training in general, and there are many evolving strategies and recommendations on how to choose the best values to obtain the best training results. In this example, we use augmentation to diversify and extend our training data. Here, we mirror 50% randomly along the row axis, column axis, and both. This can help with a better generalization of the model. However, you should not simulate variations that don't also occur in the validation and inference data. Here we define the so-called serialization strategy. During training, the last model and the best model are written to file. You can also define a strategy to, for example, save a model every nth epoch. With all these parameters set, we can start the training. In the right window, you can see some validation images that are classified with the current model. Ideally, you can see how the model gradually learns to classify the images correctly. In the left window, you can see some information about the training progress and parameters. The plot below shows two different visualizations. On the one hand, the learning rate is shown together with the top one error for the validation and training splits. The top one error represents the ratio of wrongly classified images. Note that the evaluation for this visualization takes quite a lot of time. To speed up the training, you can use a lower percentage of the training images for the visualization. Additionally, you can evaluate less often. Note, however, that this also influences the evaluation of the validation split and thus the best model that is saved during training. On the other hand, the learning rate is also visualized combined with the loss I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Let's speed this up. You can see here how the learning rate is adapted just as we specified it initially. When the training is finished, it's time to evaluate the performance of this model in detail, which we will learn about in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.